Hello everyone, my name is Clementine, welcome back to Clementine Creative. I am back, as I told you in the previous video. Weren't you watching? Weren't you listening? Uh, here I am, today, or, what, why am I saying this? Why, why am I starting this video so weird? <clears throat> in this video, I will show you the process of painting two weapons. Oh my god, I'm just creating really quality video tutorials here. I'm just sitting and making voices. Again, I'm going to be painting two weapons in this video. Uh, both of which have a little bit more sculpt painting involved. Sculpt painting for me is painting, let's say, a lion's face or something. Where you have to sculpt up the shapes. Now you always have to sculpt up the shapes, but what we're doing now is texture painting. And uh, let's say doing the lion or whatever is a um, uh, you know a sculpt sculpt painting. At least that's kind of the way I like to say it, so people know what I'm talking about. Uh, even though if, if I come up with it, then people don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't really thought this one through. Uh, anyways, um, right now you see me do the blade, but then you're gonna see me do the hand guard. Now the handguard is where we want to pay attention because that's where the lion's face comes in. And that's where you're going to see quite a bit of um, rendering something that probably would give you a lot of havocs when you start out. I know that I would probably lose my mind. And know that while I was painting that hat, I was scared the entire time because I didn't know is it going to work out or not, right? It's always a gamble. Sometimes it might work out and it's just it feels stupid because you invest all the time in something that might not work out but uh, this one did turn out so here i am now painting it i have those references on the left side just to be able to reference the light lighting um i think that's a f that's one of them is a female lion i think uh the other are male very very uh this line head turns out very nice, I would say. I think it looks really nice in the end. Uh, and uh, some of these are actually happy accidents, like the red part that comes on this uh, little, um, <clears throat> I guess, what could this be? This little spike, uh, this red part that I'm painting in right now, this was all spontaneous, you know, just happened to thought about it. And uh, that's, that's what's really nice about designing. Sometimes we get these happy accidents. You know, sometimes it really uh, saves our projects. So yeah, yeah, I'm just painting in the textures again. Nothing too fancy. Painting in textures is very easy, actually. Not at all difficult, you know. When I was painting guns, for the last project that I had for my high school, I learned a lot about texture painting while I was painting that. I didn't go on the online, on, on the online, I didn't go on the internet to look at any references. I actually just went in and uh, sort of it happened, you know, I, I evolved. So here I am uh, copying, now that I had, and now you're gonna see how I'm gonna change the lighting for some things. Like here, I'm now adding the light on the opposite side. We have to do this in order to maintain realism that this, this is shaded from one side. Of course, the shadows here, and lights don't make the entire size because in his face, the lion still has the nose, I guess, shaded almost the same way. But we can get away with a little bit of cheat, you know. This is still a concept painting. We're trying to get across the concept and we're not trying to go for a realistic look here. Um, also, what I wanted to say is that uh, you saw a little bit of a change in the outro if you do go completely till the end of the video. Uh, what I did do is, uh, I'm, try I'm now basically notifying you at the end of every video that you can follow me on Twitter, uh, DeviantArt, and Facebook. Now, it's very important that you know this, uh, because sometimes I can upload a video or something, and I want to let you guys know, but I can't because nobody follows, like, you don't know my Twitter because I don't share. I, I never say, let's say, subscribe to my channel for more videos. You know, people will subscribe if they like your shit. You don't have to ask them every single time, right? That's my sort of my motto or whatever. So I never really put out these links, but now I will do it. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna write subscribe for more videos because I think that's BS. What I am going to do though is I'm going to write uh, in the descriptions box 
links to my Twitter, DeviantArt, and Facebook so you can follow so you'll know what's going on if some Fridays there isn't a video. You know, it's just so you can follow me because uh, I would like to sometimes give you some messages or so. Sometimes I just have funny things to say and I want you guys to, 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 to hear them. At least I think they're funny. My friends don't think, think they're funny because I don't have any friends. All my imaginary friends think it's funny, so... <laughs> I'm so stupid right now. Uh, quality tutorials, everyone. Quality. If you come to Clementine Creative, you get quality tutorials all the time. You know, just talking about his imaginary friends. <laughs> I'm so stupid. But um, here you can see the line looks really nice now that it's been thrown in. And uh, the next weapon that I'm going to do is a katana. That's the last weapon I will do. I really. That's my favorite weapon. I love how I did the handle and the handguard. Uh, I did have a design changed from the sketch. Oh, okay, here we are at the part where I split the weapon. Now, here you can see me splitting the great sword in half. Now, this is something that actually was implemented in knives, knife designs. Uh, people did actually create this kind of knives where you can split them in half like that. I created a, a sword. Now, this line uh, head is actually on both sides. It's the same on both sides. Uh, but we don't see that because it's only a side view. Now, again, if this was a real concept thing, I would definitely draw a three-quarter view, the other side, side view, everything. Uh, but for now, it's kind of cool like this. I kind of like it. But it does look a little bit strange. Uh, it kind of seems like the entire thing is just sort of uh, split in half like a paper. But, uh, oh, sorry, I had to stretch. <laughs> again, professional tutorials. Um... I just really think it's not that important to create it 100% um, uh, correct. Um, what the hell am I talking about? Not 100% correct. Uh, whatever. Here again, <laughs> you're seeing me add Damascus Steel. Really makes this thing look cool. Uh, what I was going to say about the blades is that I think that for YouTube purposes, it looks okay if it's just split in half. Here you now see me sculpt the eagle now this was one of the it wasn't that difficult but this design this weapon took me three and a half hours to paint which is absolutely crazy it was it was brutal man it was vicious <laughs> really it was vicious i could not get this thing down fast even if i tried so i simply took my time and I, you know i know when i'm defeated uh, i didn't try to rush it and i created something really beautiful which i really like so here now i'll be able to see the process this is a katana sword, which sort of splits into a, a not a spear, but uh, I guess a staff with blades, a double-bladed sword, or, yeah, double-bladed sword, I think it's called. It has an actual name. Um, it's a very swift weapon, very good for turning, trickster type of weapon. Uh, very fast, you know, very swift. Um... And it all sort of works not 100% on magic uh, to basically unclip the magic, uh, unclip the sword. So basically to split it in half, uh, you sort of have to use magic for that part. All right, so that's sort of magic, just to explain how that works. But the part where it spins is not magic at all. There is a pin in there, everything just spins, it, basically the way it's supposed to work. Sorry if I said a lot of peas. So there might have been a lot of pops in there. Sorry if you heard any pops. <clears throat> I, w I don't really know. I am listening real time to what I'm saying. But sometimes I can't hear the pops and you can. But anyways, as I was saying, um, what was I saying? That, <laughs> that is a good question. What the hell? Oh, yeah. Uh, now I remember. Sorry, I, I totally got lost. Uh, the pivot point where it sort of spins, that is... You know, just a, basically a pin and the blade spins, right? And then the eagle head has a sort of a slice in the head. So the blade sits in there and the eye locks it in place So when it clicks. So, so basically when the weapon opens. And the entire eagle uh, head just moves backwards a little bit. So it straightens itself out so you have a longer um, handle for the actual st double-bladed sword later. So when you're sw swinging it, you don't cut yourself because you have enough space to hold the weapon. But as I did this, you know, here, I was thinking, what should I do for the handguard? Now, I knew that there was going to be a wing here. That was already set in stone, because I really liked that idea. 
Uh, and again, not a shame in referencing. It's, don't draw anything from your head if you're not sure how it looks like because it'll look like crap. Just go on the internet, reference it. You know, it's not shameful. Gonna keep saying that because it's very important. Anyways, uh, here I wasn't sure what I was gonna do because the, the, the initial sketch was very rough. Didn't have any actual information. Uh, just a second, I'm probably gonna cough. <coughs> I'm so sorry about that. Like I said, I'm kind of have a cold. Anyways, um, I didn't know what to put in because the sketch was very rough. So what I did was I then came up with an idea to create a very rough forged style handle uh, or handguard. And I really I think that's going to look really nice. Um, here I'm just experimenting something, kind of looks like crap. And then I came up with this idea, oh, what if I throw in a, you know, a rough forged look? So you, you'll see what I mean. Basically, a chunk of material that's just slightly been forged into shape. Not too much, just it has a lot of these. You can see the strikes of the hammer. And I think that looks really cool as a handguard. And it has sort of an eagle in the side. And this idea came from an eagle, because eagle is one of the animals in Egypt. Uh, but yeah, here, actually, before I say that, I want to actually show you now. Just watch how... When you have enough practice, uh, how you can easily start putting in some of these shapes. Again, this is just texture work. This is the texture of this material, right? Very hammered look, very rough. And now I'm basically throwing in the eagle, sculpting the eagle. And this was a very difficult part here. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to pull it off. But uh, I did a really nice job, I think. <clears throat> now, I really wanted the eagle to be very stylized, very hammered. Sculpted, basically. And the wing looks really nice. And I also really like how I combined the red color with the gold. Um, but as I was saying about the animals, there's a lot of uh, animals in Egypt that are very known, like snakes, cats, um, uh, lions, uh, eagles. You know, These are the sort of animals that were kind of involved in that um, culture. So I kind of wanted to use the eagle. And especially because we have Ra as a character. And each of these weapons has an owner. Let's say this is uh, a Moon Ross Katana, right? Now, uh, all of these weapons work better with their named owner. So let's say the Greatsword is named Sekhmet's Greatsword. Now, it works the best with Sekhmet, but it also works with other players or other characters. Uh, here, I'm, I, was I was on a struggle bus with the blade. For some reason, when it comes to Katanas, I just don't seem to be able to do a nice blade. Can't seem to be able to do a nice blade. But again, tell me what you think about the handle or which, which weapon is your favorite. Uh, katana is definitely my favorite weapon. It just, I think that the entire handle and handguard just look fantastic. And uh, I know it sounds kind of egotistic. I think that's what it's called, egotistic. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's just how it is. Sometimes, you know, if you like your own designs, that's a great sign because I never liked my drawings. Uh, but this one was definitely definitely really nice. Uh, but we are slowly coming to the end of the video. We have about a minute of recording left. Here I'm just throwing in some final details and I'm now going to try to transform the weapon into a double-bladed sword. You can see me, I'm basically just cutting the blade in half, lassoing it, turning it, and now just figuring out how this thing is assembled inside. I already had this figured out when I did the sketches, now I'm just trying to throw it in. Here you can see me, I'm going to draw the wood, it's kind of bent backwards and has its little cut lines where the eagle turns and then locks itself in place. That's uh, That can, basically I think this kind of weapon could be constructed, not very useful, very difficult to construct the blade to work like that. But uh, I think it uh, it turned out nice, at least some sort of function uh, functionality is involved, but definitely not realistic. But yeah, these are all the weapons now gathered together. Uh, in the end, you'll be able to see all all weapons together. But yeah, this is the great sword and this is the katana. I hope you enjoyed this weapon designs, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Everything changes. That's called the mask of steel. The mask of steel is not something they had in that time because they didn't even have steel. But I still thought it would be interesting as a look. I mean, it is very.